Are you tired of making homegrown combos? You practice, you test, but your combos are a mess. Well, no more. Introducing Bardox Auto Combo. Bardox Auto Combo is the only auto combo in the game that seems to provide its own gravitational pull. This small string of three identical button presses will have your opponents in a bunch. Order now and I'll even sweeten the deal by throwing in your own Revenger Assault. But wait, there's more. Order within the next 60 seconds and I'll double that offer to two Revenger's Assaults. One on the air and one on the ground. Both of which will include a hard knockdown courtesy of Arc System Game. Once again, that's Bardox Auto Combo for the price of $5. Order now. Well, that's a hard bit to transition out of. How's it going everybody, Dato Doi here with another Should You Play video, this time covering the top tier himself, Bardock. As is the usual with this series, we're going to go ahead and start by covering the characters' cons, then go into their pros, and finish off by talking about where they belong on a team in Dragon Ball Fighters. I'll just go ahead and be blunt and say that the cons for Bardock is going to be quite short because the man does not have a lot of them. The only one I could really think of is that his beam slash key blast game isn't all too great. He doesn't have any beams to speak of and his only key blast attack is either one on the ground or one in the air, both of which really aren't going to do you much against a horde of Kamehamehas. With that said though, no one is aware of that fact more than Bardock, which is why he's chosen to replace his lack of a beam with just flinging himself across the stage at his enemies. Although this strategy didn't work too well against Frieza, it actually does work insanely well in Dragon Ball Fighters. This is because Dragon Ball Fighters is predominantly a rushdown game, and the fact that Bardock has this move allows him to completely overstep the neutral phase of the game. If this attack hits, he can simply vanish into a combo to get a sliding or hard knockdown, if they block, they can just vanish and continue their block string. Now, admittedly, Arc System Works did feel that that step was a little too much, so in the recent patch, they made it so you can reflect after the vanish. But as I've said before, just because they have that option doesn't mean it's inherently a safe one. Bardock can still bait out that reflect if he wants to. And if Bardock does land this move raw and neutral, has a little bit of bar and sparking, he can go ahead and convert into a touch of death combo if he has the proper assist with it. This, I assume, is a very fun and interactive thing to get hit by. Obviously, I don't know, because if this ever happened to me, I'd probably quit the game. Moving on to the big thing that makes Bardock such a high-tiered character is the versatility that this man offers. Almost anything he can do on the ground, he can do in the air. This includes his level 1, the level 1 after his level 1, and the level 3. Wait a minute, go back to that last one? Yeah, I forgot to mention that Bardock has two level 1s that he can chain together at the press of a button. Obviously, this just means that there will be certain times when Bardock can pick up a kill and stay as the point character in the game, whereas other characters would be forced to switch out in order to ensure they pick up the knockout. And while both of his level 1s are pretty good, they really don't hold the candle to his level 3, which when performed in the air and on the ground set him up for great wake up game. This is one of the more iconic parts of Bardock's kit, because you'll be seeing this a lot in top 8 at tournaments, online play, and if you're like me, you're nightmares. Otherwise though, it's a pretty cool move. And obviously there are other pros for Bardock as well, almost every normal he has is super good, his block strings are super tight, and he's just an overall very fast oppressive character. But now let's move on and talk about where I feel Bardock belongs on a team. He's a point character, we all knew that, let's not, let's not try to pretend. Pair him up with almost any assist in the game and his block strings just get longer, his combos just get longer, and his mix-ups just get scarier. With that being said though, I do have some homegrown teams if you're looking for something to start out with. You have Team Pure Saiyans, Team Goku's Family Lineage, Team Tournament Money, and Team Shadow Clone Jutsu. At the end of the day, Bardock is an insanely fun character, one that I feel everybody should try at least once to see if he's right for them. That makes it easy for me to recommend him to just about anybody that can stand playing a top tier character. He's also great at acquiring some hate mail on the console versions of the game, so that's a bonus as well. So should you play Bardock? I would say yes, but I think we already all knew that. Well, that's gonna do it for me in this video. As always, go down in the comments and let me know what you thought about this video and Bardock in general. While you're down there, if you like these videos and want to see more like this from the channel, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. It really does help the channel out a lot. You can also feel free to recommend other characters you would like to see in this format, either down below in the comments as well, or you can at me over on Twitter, at Dato Doya. As always, I'm Dato Doya. I'll see you in the next video.